that ice age again and it's starting to get cold this year but it's going to be a lot colder I think by 2024. Now what we're talking about today is why some scientists and it is only a very few scientists think that the mini ice age might not be so mini and the main reason is geological activity. Yep starting with earthquakes. Now the reasoning behind this is that rock expands and contracts with temperature just like everything else. So how much? Well a reasonable amount. Um, not anywhere near as much as metals obviously but here we're looking at an average of something like we're looking between the 10 and 35 degrees C here we're looking at an average of something like 7 times 10 to the minus 6 per degree centigrade. And um, what does this really mean? Well this means if you've got 500 kilometers between two faults you're looking at around about a one and a half to two meter shrinkage in that area per degree centigrade drop. So it all depends how much it drops. But scientists have been looking at ground temperatures and especially sea temperatures because there's an awful lot of faults under the sea and the sea temperatures have already dropped by one degree. And this might account for some of the increase in offshore air earthquakes like the one that recently occurred in Japan and caused the tsunami scare when a tsunami didn't actually appear. Um, and the reason that this happens when the Earth's temperature changes is if you look at this fault line here and this is a typical exposed fault line and you can see that all it is holding these two large slabs of rock together is the fact that the edges of them are rough. Well if they both contract and move away from each other even by a few centimetres one of these rock plates or both of these rock plates are going to slip and this is what we call an earthquake. Now this is a surface fault and these surface faults don't just happen high up. They don't just happen on the surface of the earth. They happen sometimes miles and miles beneath the earth and some of the largest earthquakes we've had are from very very deep faults. And these earthquakes don't just occur on land, obviously they occur under the sea. Now, why are earthquakes a problem? Well, earthquakes are a problem because one of the known things is that large earthquakes tend to trigger nearby volcanoes. And here's our wonderful Icelandic volcano, the one with the huge amounts of ash coming out of it actually stop people flying for several weeks. And earthquakes produce two things. They produce a lot of dust which settles in the upper atmosphere and stays there for a very long time before drifting down to earth and they produce sulfur dioxide. Now what happens with sulphur dioxide is that sulphur dioxide turns in the atmosphere when it hits water into sulphuric acid and sulphuric acid is a very good reflector of sun energy. So it has a role in climate change and as it says here when a volcano erupts huge amounts of sulphur dioxide are spewed into the stratosphere and converted to sulphates. These aerosols stay in the atmosphere for about two years. They reflect incoming solar radiation back into space. And the net effect is a cooling of the lower atmosphere and Earth's surface. So sulphur dioxide is important. But we're also worried about how much snow and ice there is on the Earth because this affects 
the actual reflectivity of the Earth and how much of the Earth actually absorbs sunlight as opposed to reflecting it out. We know that in the last ice age, towards the end of it, 27% of the land, ma land mass was covered in an ice sheet, or several ice sheets rather. Um, and so, you know, if we get to 27 or 30 percent coverage of ice and snow, then the temperature is going to drop, and it's going to drop an awful lot, and it might stay that way, because the sun simply cannot warm us up. Now, what does albedo mean? Well, to give you an idea, here we are. This is, it's a measurement of how much light is reflected. So, 0.04 of the light is reflected by fresh tarmac because it's black and it absorbs most of the light that hits it. Conifer forest 0.08 but fresh snow reflects 0.8 to 0.9 of the light and heat radiated from the sun and this is the problem this is what they call the snow and ice lock-in effect where when the ground is covered by snow it sucks all the heat out of the atmosphere and the sun cannot warm it up and if this happens to a large enough percentage of the Earth's surface during the mini ice age, then it will push us into a proper ice age and we need to avoid that. And there are possible ways we can do that, which I'll detail in a later video. So, let's have a look at how snow forms. Hmm. Snowflakes born inside clouds at high elevations. Silicate materials, clay minerals and micas, i.e. volcanic ash, can act as the core of a snow crystal. So here's another effect of our volcanism. All this ash that's coming out as it falls down, as it drifts through the clouds, if the temperature is cold enough, it will increase snowfall more snow will form in the clouds, more precipitation means that we get a higher albedo for the earth which means it gets colder and it's this series of events that has these scientists worried combined with the increasing volcanicity and increasing tectonic fault levels at the moment and this is what is worrying them makes them think that it could possibly be a proper ice age starting and not a mini ice age. Now people think that our oh, well continental plates move very slowly but I have to tell you that Japan moved over three feet after the last earthquake. Three feet. Not centimeters a year. Not like one and a half centimeters a year which is what they say it is on average but three feet in one year. And a similar thing happened after the Mount St. Helens eruption. So large geologic events can cause large changes in the Earth's surface fairly quickly. Anyhow, I hope you've found this enjoyable and uh, interesting. If you have, please like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you all again soon. Well, you could subscribe to Arduino Tronic or just go jump in a lake.